welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. President Soro Ramaphosa released his much-anticipated electricity intervention this week. Terence Creamer joins me to talk about what it will take to make sure it works. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. What are the main innovations contained in this plan? Well, a lot of the plan is really th things or actions that I think have been mooted over many years. We know we've been in this load shedding crisis for 14 years now and it's actually only intensifying. Basically, we haven't added enough non-ESCOM capacity to the grid, and then the ESCOM capacity that is in the system is not operating. It's been neglected, it's been badly maintained, it's old, and uh, there's also been fraud and corruption around those plants. So there's a number of issues that prevent uh, those plants from immediately coming back into service. So the innovations really are about adding non-ESCOM supply and then trying to do what is necessary to get uh, ESCOM operating at a more stable, less volatile level, at its, especially among in its coal fleet. So the, the, the issues that are, the non-ESCOM issues, the, the big innovation I think was to increase the size of bid window 6, double it up to 5.2 gigawatts, that's massive. Uh, over the many years that we've been procuring a renewable energy, although we did have that seven years where we didn't procure anything, we've introduced less than 7,000 megawatts. We're talking about one bid window, which closes next month, uh, looking to get 5.2 gigawatts, about 5,200 megawatts of additional renewable energy. So it's a, a very big, ambitious goal. Then also trying to get bid window five over the line, being pragmatic there around local contact, that's important. Lifting entirely the 100 megawatt cap on uh, distributed generators. These are generators that mines and factories are putting in, in place. Very importantly is, is, is outlining that there'll be a feed-in tariff for rooftop solar. Both households and factories and, and farms, etc., will be able to uh, inject their electricity into the grid and be paid for that, any surplus that, that, that is available. And then Eskom will be able to mop up what uh, is available in industry that, and from RPPs, renewables RPPs, there's surplus available in the system and Eskom's pre really prevented from moving ahead to uh, procure that and now we're saying we can go ahead and, and offer uh, those p companies with surplus and offer it, uh, a standard offer it seems and I'll pay for that uh, additional uh, electricity into the grid and uh, mop up any surplus from the existing renewable RPPs, which uh, is, is sitting there dripping roast and immediately can be injected into the system. So those are important. They have been knocking around for many years, but at last they're now on paper and in a comprehensive plan. What will be required to ensure implementation can begin? Also what the President announced is that uh, the Mineral Resources and Energy Minister, Gwede Mantash, will issue a government gazette which will allow for the procurement of the rest of the, um, the capacity or allocation in the integrated resource plan of 2019. We know it's being reviewed, we know it's be outdated, but there is still surplus renewables and other generation that hasn't been gazetted in the form of a ministerial determination. And without a ministerial determination, that c capacity cannot be procured either centrally or uh, more and more, we're going to have this decentralized uh, addition of electricity from companies and mines, etc., and farms. So that's an important step that hasn't been uh, taken yet. It needs to be taken by the Minister of Mineral Resources and Energy. There's uh, also a number of other things under uh, that department that need to be done in terms of getting uh, bid window five across the line those projects that have already been procured but we know are facing problems, they're going to have to be some sort of what they call pragmatic solutions. That doesn't just involve mineral resources and energy but it also involves DTRC around the local content so we need an announcement there. We need confirmation from the RPP office that they can handle this massive bid window 6 at uh, 5,200 megawatts. There hasn't been an announcement there yet and again that falls under the Department of Mineral Resources and Energy. Uh, so there's a, a lot of things, and then if you're going to have a feed-in tariff, I imagine not, they spoke about a feed-in tariff from Eskom that has to be approved by the regulator. So NERSA has to be involved, and we know that there's this big tussle around Eskom's retail tariffs that's been sitting with 
the regulator for two years. It's never been approved, this issue about splitting uh, fixed charges versus energy charges, which is key to unlocking uh, a f any feed-in tariff because Eskom or all the municipalities, whoever the distributor is, needs to know that they're going to get paid for the grid services they provide uh, as well as any ancillary services they provide to the network. At the moment, that's bundled in a single tariff. Not everywhere. Some municipalities have already started uh, splitting it. But if you don't have that split of fixed charges so that the municipality and Eskom distribution is secure in that revenue and being able to continue providing that service of the grid, which is very important to unlocking feed-in tariffs and unlocking the surplus from renewables without getting into a utility debt spiral and without those with solar and battery in their houses or at their, their uh, businesses being subsidized by the rest of the consumers uh, through the way the bundle tariff work, that has to be done. So the regulator has to come on board and we know that those processes tend to take very long. Plus, we know that ESCOM is going to have a new application that has to be adjudicated. And the regulator is talking about a new methodology which uh, has been put out for public comment, which is confusing a lot of uh, participants in the sector because this methodology uh, involves, uh, it's going to involve not just ESCOM but the municipalities. And there's a public comment phase underway at the moment. So there's a lot happening there. But uh, in order to get the feed-in tariff element going, we need the regulator involved. So you can see there's a lot to do. There's not just one switch and we can get things going. Obviously, the things that are within Eskom's domain around high levels of maintenance spend, getting skill, more skills into the system, they can move ahead with all that. The PFMA exemptions, which allow them to acquire spares and uh, engage with OEMs over longer contractual periods, for instance, they can go ahead with that. But the, the non eskim element involves, uh, requires a number of announcements that simply have not been made yet. When could this plan start having a positive impact on load shedding? Well, as I mentioned, there's a number of moving parts. There's so many components. So there's no single switch and there's no silver bullet here. It requires a lot uh, to take place. I didn't even mention <laughs> earlier that we also need to have the battery storage uh, tender coming out from the IPP office and the Pika plant, which is going to be very important as we add more uh, high levels of renewables penetration. We're going to need battery storage and we're going to need uh, capacity, peaking capacity, and th th we, s we simply don't have enough of that at the moment. And those tenders also have to go out. So there's a number of uh, issues that still have to be announced. And all these moving parts, if everyone does their bit, we can definitely start seeing uh, an impact on load shedding in this sort of 24-month horizon, which the plan focuses on. But it really requires some immediate announcements and urgent follow-up action. Other than what we're seeing a little bit out of Eskom around maintenance and them announcing their battery energy storage uh, contracts, uh, which is very important, a, a very important sign that we're moving progressively on that storage side. I think uh, we haven't seen the other follow-up actions, which, which should have come straight after. And I think, suppose, what the next, the big next hurdle to overcome is the ANC poli policy conference this weekend, where an endorsement is needed, I suppose, for this plan from the from the party, from the governing party. Uh, and uh, so once that's out the way, hopefully we'll start seeing all the other announcements and uh, interventions that are needed to unlock what is a workable plan, but involves very many players and in requires all of those players to be pointing in the same direction and be taking their actions that they need to take with some urgency and so with some speed. Otherwise, you know, no new capacity is going to come into the system. And that's what we need, urgently need. We need this additional 6,000 megawatts or so into the system to lower the risk of load shedding on a daily basis and to give Eskom headroom to do the maintenance it requires and also to do the calculus around this uh, energy availability factor. You know, the whole plan around Eskom is around raising its energy availability factor, but there will be some units where the cost-benefit analysis is not going to add up and they're going to just have to I think at some point cut their losses on some of these units and say, well, that capacity no longer exists. And I think, I think this is an important phase now where we need some honesty and so, some sort of frankness around some of these units and, and showing that this is just not going to be cost effective 
to get an EAF of 75% out of a unit that's only got two more years to run, etc. And uh, units that also don't aren't environmentally compliant. How much is it going to cost to get these to the minimum em emission standards, which is a legal requirement? And at some point, you have to, you know, be frank and say, well, these units will never make uh, pass that muster in terms of the environment, and they're never going to pass muster in terms of a cost benefits analysis. Let's move on to get this other non eskom supply into the system as quickly as possible. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.